All right, so in this video, we're going to begin Unit 5, uh, talking about heredity. We'll talk about meiosis, and then we'll talk about how that works into Mendelian uh, genetics. And so first, to talk about meiosis. Meiosis is the process of making haploids, which are uh, haploid cells or sex cells or gametes. And um, this happens in sexually reproducing organisms. Those organisms start out as diploid, and they uh, and they create haploid cells. So a couple words there that you need to know: diploid and haploid. So diploid is where you have two copies of each chromosome. Uh, you get one from mom and one from dad. And so in humans, for instance, we have 46 chromosomes in our body cells or somatic cells. You'll hear both of those terms used and those somatic cells again 46 chromosomes 23 of them come from mom 23 of them come from dad and those pairs exist in these what are called homologous pairs and so here's one pair this one comes from mom this one comes from dad they have the same genes on them they may have different versions of those genes which we'll talk about in another video. Um, they may have different versions of those genes, but they have the same genes, which is why they're called homologous pairs. All right. So they're the same. These two are the same, but these two are different than these two, but they're the same as each other. So I hope that makes sense. You have pairs. And so in a human cell, there's 23 pairs. Different organisms have different numbers of pairs. And you oftentimes will use the 2N symbol to denote diploid. Um, so then you have haploid. Haploid is where you just have one of those pairs. And so this organism makes haploid cells as sex cells. And so each one of those cells gets a single one of those pairs. And so that's so when sexual reproduction does happen, this haploid combines with another haploid to create a diploid cell. All right. So. Again, body cells are what are going to be the diploid cells or somatic cells, and the haploid cells are going to be gametes or sex cells. Diploid is a 2N and haploid is N. And so back to the process of meiosis. During meiosis, there are two divisions, uh, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. You can see all the phases here that you're familiar with, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and those are the same as far as what happens in them. There's going to be some differences that we'll talk about. There's only one interphase because, remember, interphase is where DNA is duplicated. And so if you want to think about it from a numbers perspective, uh, you start with a cell. Let's use our own cells as an example that has 46 chromosomes. Those chromosomes are all duplicated, and so then you have 92 there's one division that takes place, so then you have 46 again, and another division that takes place, and so then you have four cells with 23 chromosomes each, or haploid cells. And these four cells, as opposed to mitosis, where those cells are all identical, these four cells are all genetically different from one another. And so let's look at some of the different phases I'm not going to go into all the details of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. We did that in the cell cycle unit. All of those same things are happening. I'm just going to point out the main differences that occur in this process. And so again, in interphase, which is important and is not part of meiosis proper, interphase is when the DNA is duplicated. All right. And so during prophase, again, you're going to have you're going to have chromosomes that are going to form, except for in this case, and we'll talk more about crossing over it and tetrads and that sort of thing in the next video. But um, in this case, those homologous pairs are going to line up with one another. All right. So they're, they're going to line up together. They're going to form these structures called tetrads, which we will go into in the next video. Then you have metaphase. They line up in the middle. All right, so no, nothing big here. But anaphase 1, I want to talk about because in anaphase, what happens is those homologous pairs, the one you got from mom, the one you got from dad, they're going to separate. And so this is an important distinction to, to know for anaphase 1. Anaphase 1 is where homologous pairs separate. And so this cell here, let's go here to telophase. This cell here is going to get one one of each of those pairs, and this cell here is going to get one of each of those pairs. Notice you still have 
these these chromosomes still represent their duplicated state, and so it's a sim. It'd be similar to um, if one think about pairs of shoes. You know, you have twenty three pairs of shoes. There's forty six shoes. Well, then you duplicate that, and then over here you have all lefts and then all rights. If you want to think about it that way, that's kind of how that always helped me. But then, so these cells are technically haploid, even though they have two of every chromosome that they have. They're haploid because there's just only one of each pair, all right? And so this is a, um, so anaphase one, homologous pairs separate, and then you have two cells that are both haploid that are doubled, and then that makes sense. All right, so moving on, meiosis two. So you have those two cells that both have doubled copies. You have nothing special in prophase this time. Metaphase, line up the middle. So anaphase two, at this point, you have sister chromatids that are going to separate. And so those individual pieces are going to separate. This one and this one are not necessarily equal, as in mitosis, when they were equal, right? The sister chromatids were identical to each other. In this case, they're not because of something that happens during prophase one that we'll talk about in the next video called crossing over. And so each cell is going to get a copy of each one of those chromosomes. And so you're going to end up with four haploid cells, each one, if this is a human cell, for instance, each one with 23 chromosomes representing one of each of those 23 pairs. And so then you have each one of these that could combine with, if you have another individual over here that also is making four cells. And so if you combine those two, you have a new diploid organism with 26 or 23 complete pairs if everything goes correctly. We will talk about how some instances in which this cannot or this won't happen uh, correctly. So some big differences between mitosis and meiosis. Uh, first of all, similarities, all the processes that make mitosis function, like the lining up in the middle, the, chroma, the, the spindle fibers connecting to the kinetochores, the centromere, that, all that business, nuclear envelope disappearing, all of that is similar. Cytokinesis still separating the cells, similar. The differences are the product. So in mitosis, you have two diploid daughter cells. They are identical to one another, and they are end up, they're going to go through that same cell cycle, which is going to end in mitosis also. In meiosis, you have two divisions where you end up with four cells. Each one of these cells is diploid, and each one of them is genetically different from one another. In fact, you could almost say that they are genetically unique because the chances of getting one gamete that is similar to the other one are astronomically small, particularly in an organism that has lots of pairs of chromosomes like ourselves. And so it's important to note the difference. Though you have a lot of similarities in the way that the cells divide and some of the names of the phases and whatnot, the product is completely different. The product of mitosis is going to continue to go through the cell cycle. The product of meiosis, four genetically different cells, that are finished. They won't divide anymore. They're not going to duplicate. They are a finished product. They will not continue going through any kind of cycle.